Good evening. We'd like to welcome you to the Trinity Baptist Church in Westfield, North Carolina, to our 6 o'clock p.m. pre-recorded Wednesday night service for the shut-ins or anybody else who would like to view. We're glad to have you with us tonight, and we hope and pray this service would be a blessing to you. Let me just mention that our church, the Trinity Baptist Church, is located at 1233 Collins Town Road in the Asbury section of Westfield, North Carolina. And uh, we have Sunday school at 10 o'clock, preaching service at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Sunday nights are at 6 o'clock p.m. and Wednesday nights are at 7 o'clock p.m. And we will be having our, all these services that I just mentioned are inside services. We've been doing that for a long time now. Thank the Lord. Give him the glory and honor for that. The Lord's blessed us. But we are having inside services. But we also have an FM transmitter for those that are sick. And maybe they want to come and sit in the parking lot. At least they can come and sit in the parking lot and listen from their vehicles to 92.9 FM. All I got to do is turn the radio to that, and they can hear what's going on inside. And that's been a blessing for a lot of people that maybe maybe they felt like they might have had a little something, and they thought, I really don't want to bring it in on anybody in case I do, so I'm just going to sit in the car and listen. And thank God they come on, and we're glad to have them. And uh, so pray for our services a little bit later on tonight at 7 o'clock and all the services that are going on. We try to do this right here, uh, kind of like a Wednesday night service. So we, we do want to go to the Lord in prayer, ask God to bless. We've got a lot of folk in the church that are sick, not feeling well. want to remember them in our prayers. want to pray for our missionaries tonight. God would bless them. Uh, we appreciate so much uh, all of our missionaries, but Brother Brent Rochester and his family, they're members of our church and work out of our church, and we're so glad to, to, to know them. Amen. They've been a blessing to our hearts. And uh, we hope and pray to be a blessing to them if they get to view you or whoever you are. Thank you for viewing. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. And most of all, pray for the lost, that they'll be saved. They need to be born again. And let's pray for them. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for the privilege of being able to go to the Lord in prayer. And come to you in prayer and ask you to bless and answer all the prayer requests that we've mentioned. And Lord, there are folks sick and here in our church and other places as well. God, we pray you'd raise them up physically and meet their need. I pray for the lost. Most of all, they'll be saved. Those just back so they'll get right with you. Help us to serve you, Lord, to live for you. Put you first in our lives. I pray for all of our missionaries tonight, God, that you'd bless them and meet their need. Help them, Lord, and just uh, use them for your glory and your honor. I pray for Brother Brent and his family, Lord. You'd bless them in a great, great way. And all these missionaries, we pray for our country, our leaders, those in authority over us, Lord. Lord, I just pray for our services that will be going on uh, at the church at 7 tonight. God, you'd bless that. And not just there, but everywhere the word of God's preached. And just thank you for this ministry that we never dreamed we'd have, but Lord, you laid it on our heart. And uh, Lord, I'm glad that we can do it. And help us, Lord, to be a blessing. We can't do that without your help. Bless us as we sing tonight and as we worship together and uh, sing these old congregational songs and look at the Word of God. I pray it'd be an encouragement. I pray we'd learn. I pray we'd be challenged. And Lord, we'll thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, we're going to be singing a couple of songs tonight, Lord will. Now that good old red back church hymnal. And uh, you may have a green one or a burgundy one, amen. But uh, anyway, page number 384, we're going to do that tonight. There shall be showers of blessing. And you know, we've been dry around our area for a while, and uh, but we've had a lot of rain before that. But you know, we need showers, but we need showers of blessings. And this song right here is a blessing. If you'll just think about, a lot of people think about rain when they're thinking about this song right here. I mean, first thing you go to or your mind might go to is rain. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about showers of, like rain showers, but we need showers of blessing. That's what we really need. And uh, let's sing it tonight. You help us if you know it, okay? I'm sure most of you will. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing Sent from the Savior above Showers of blessing Showers of blessing we need Mercy drops round us are falling But for the showers we plead There shall be showers of blessing Reviving again over the hills and the valleys, the sound of abundance of rain, showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops. 
Our spells us are falling, but for the showers we plead, there shall be showers of blessing. Send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing. Come and now honor thy word. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing. Now as on Jesus we call. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead. All right, that's a great number right there, and we want to do another one here that uh, I believe you'll be familiar with. One called Amazing Grace. I'm a little bit out of tune here. Let me see what I need to do. Try that. We'll get it. Help of the Lord. <laughs> this is called Amazing Grace. Let's sing it together, okay, and make this another congregational number. Amazing Grace, how sweet a sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but to you this evening. Let me lay this guitar down. You can be turning to the book of James. The book of James. James chapter number one. And uh, we're continuing on where we were last week. James chapter number one. And we're going to be in verse number, let's see here, verse number 27. James chapter one, verse number 27. Now, while you're turning, while you're turning, so, preacher, you got any announcements? Yeah, thank God the Lord loves you. And he wants to save you if you don't know him. He wants to save your soul. 
He wants to give you a home in heaven to look forward to one day. Just giving you a little bit of time to turn to James chapter 1. We'll read verse 26 and 27, then we'll get into James chapter 2 with the help of the Lord this evening. Thank you again for viewing. We're praying for you. I trust you'll pray for me. I need your prayers. I need the Lord's help. We all do. And uh, boy, I, I thank him so much for saving my soul, for giving me my sins, and giving me a home in heaven to look forward to. He sure has been good to me. James chapter number one, let's pray, and then we'll look in verse number 26, 27. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for the privilege of being able to have this video, and I hope it's a blessing to those that are viewing tonight. I pray you'd help us as we look at the word of God. I pray you forgive me of my sins and faults and failures, my shortcomings, God. Lord, I confess those to you, and I pray I want to be what you'd have me to be. Help me to be in fellowship with you. Forgive me of my sins, Lord. I pray you'd just bless the, the listeners, Lord, the viewers tonight, God, that you'd just speak to their heart or whenever they're viewing, God. They're lost, that they'd see their need to be saved or backslid, they'd get right with you. Just thank you for being so good. Thank you for Trinity Baptist Church in Westfield, North Carolina. Thank you for the privilege to pastor here, Lord, and I pray you'd just use us, God, for your glory, and we'll thank you for what you do. Lord, we love our folk. They're your folk. We love them, Lord. We pray you'd bless them in a great way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. James chapter number one, we'll start reading in verse number 26 this evening. James chapter one, verse number 26. James makes this statement, and he says, If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, this man... Religion is vain. But I left out part of that. Let's go back and read that again. If any man among you seemeth to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart. He's deceiving himself, isn't he? This man's religion is vain or useless. And then he tells us in verse 27, pure religion and undefiled before God is this. Here it is. You ready? To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Well, I tell you, we, we looked at that verse last week, but I want us to think about what it's saying again tonight. Pure religion and undefiled before God, the right kind, in other words, is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction, to try to be a comfort to those folk that need comforting, and to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. And we do that by keeping our sins confessed, keeping our sins confessed to God. He goes on in the next verse, which is chapter 2, verse 1, but I want to read verse 27 and then go right into verse number 1. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. My brethren, my brethren. Listen, there's no question who James is talking to. He's talking to the brethren, amen. Those that saved by the grace of God. My brethren. So when he talks about visiting the fatherless and widows and, and keeping himself unspotted from the world. He says, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to persons. Listen, we should love everybody. Now, I didn't say we loved everybody's ways, but we should love everybody. Jesus died for whosoever. And there's some folks that just flat out make us sick, so to speak. Some of the wickedness and ungodliness that they're wrapped up in. But we should love their soul, and we should want to see them get saved. So he says, my brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the, the Lord of glory, with respect to persons. In other words, we should try to treat people right. We should try to treat people in the congregation. We should try to treat them right. You've heard the term cliques. I believe that's spelled, boy, I'm going to show my ignorance right here, more than normal, C-L-I, maybe Q-U-E-S, I don't know, but cliques, as in little groups. But we should have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ with respect to persons. He says, verse 2, For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay, and, and by the way, that don't mean homosexual. They have stolen the word gay from us. Gay means happy. Homosexuals don't have nothing to be happy about because what they're doing, their lifestyle, is an abomination to God. It makes God sick. It's wicked. It's ungodly. So he's not talking about the homosexual lifestyle, he says. He says, if you have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing and say unto him, sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool, or, 
Are ye not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? In other words, it's evil thoughts when we think like that. What's he saying? He's saying if someone, brethren, now brethren, listen to me now, myself included, if somebody comes into the congregation and let's say they look like they're wealthy and somebody else comes in the congregation that's kind of poor looking, we should be kind to both. We shouldn't show respect to the person that looks like, well, they've got it all going on. Well, they've got plenty of money. No, we should, we should, yes, we should treat them right. We should be kind to them. We should treat them right. Just like we should the poor person that comes in, we should be kind to them and treat them right. If we have respect of persons, the Bible says, we become judges of evil thoughts. So that tells us right there, we don't need to do that, do we? No. So pure religion undefiled before God is to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. If we're going to keep ourselves unspotted from the world, then brethren, we can't have the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to persons. We need to love people. We need to show people love. There's a preacher, a pastor that I'm thinking of right now. And one thing they said about him was this. He treated everybody with love. He treated everybody with love. There's another one I'm thinking about right now. They, I mean, sometimes he would preach hard, but his people knew that he loved them. He did that because he loved them. He was trying to help them. He was trying to be an encouragement to them. So treat the poor just like you treat the rich or treat the rich just like you treat the poor. Treat the poor. Don't be a respected persons because if we do, we become judges of evil thoughts. That, that's, that's not evil thoughts. And if we've got evil thoughts going on, if you go back to chapter 1, verse 27, that's not keeping ourselves unspotted from the world, is it? So we don't need to show respect to persons. Let's read on and see what else he says here. He says in verse number 5, Hearken, my beloved brethren. There he is. I mean, he's making it plain who he's talking to. He ain't talking to lost people. He's talking to saved people. Hearken, my beloved brethren. Hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you. Think about that. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seat. Do they not blaspheme that worthy name by the which you're called? If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, you do well. Verse 9 says, But if you have respect of persons, you commit sin. Boy, did you hear that? But if you have respect to persons, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. We'll stop there. I'm not quite done yet, but we'll stop reading there as far as, as, far as we're going to go tonight. But now think about this. It's a pretty serious thing when we show respect to persons, isn't it? Lord, help us. They come in rich, be kind to them. Show them love. Make them welcome. Preach the word. Don't change the message. But if somebody poor comes in, love them. Be kind to them. Preach the word. Don't change the message. I've heard preachers talk about somebody, let's say just an individual come in and and, and boy, just while they're there, let them have it. You know what I think? I think whatever the God lays on my heart to preach, that's what I need to preach. Not what I think somebody might need. I need to preach what God wants me to preach. And if I do, God will deal with their heart, whoever it is, about whatever needs to be dealt with. Amen. And I know God can. And I, and I, I, want, I want to preach what's right. I want to preach the truth. But I will let God do the convicting. And the Holy Ghost of God is a lot better than that than I am. Brethren, if you claim to be saved by the grace of God and you can't bridle your tongue, the Bible says your religion's vain. It's useless. He says pure religion undefiled for God to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. I mean, that's what God, God wants us to live a life that would please him and then not have respect of persons, brethren. Let's not have respect of persons. no. If the poor man comes in, treat him nice. If the rich man comes in, treat him nice. Don't, don't show favor to him. Don't show favor. Don't say, oh, 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 you, you come up here. You, you come right on up here and sit. And a poor person comes and says, oh, you just stay back there in the vestibule. you. We'll get you a chair back there. No, 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 no. Listen, praise God, treat them the same. You say, well, the rich person might not like that. Well, God does. God would like it. Isn't that what matters anyway? 
So if the poor comes in, you say, if you've got a seat, wherever, you know, have a seat. Uh, don't have no, we don't have, hey, let me say this, and I'm, I'm closing, I'm closing. We don't have assigned seats at Trinity Baptist Church. I've said this before, I've heard of people sitting down in somebody's seat, maybe visiting the church, sit down in somebody's so-called seat, and that person get upset and say something to them or stand there by the pew till they moved. I hope none of our people ever do that, and I find out about it. And I'm not the authority, but what I'm saying is this. We don't have assigned seats. Now, we all do probably have seats that we normally sit in, but I'd hate to think I couldn't move sit somewhere else if somebody needed my seat. Praise God. You know how I look at that? I look at that like, thank God. Amen. Hey, I'm the pastor with the help of the Lord. I'm not boasting in that, but what I'm saying is I'm the pastor. I don't have an assigned seat. Matter of fact, I, I, don't, I don't even have a seat, period. I don't guess I, I, I hardly ever am sitting down. I'm up here at the front, maybe sitting on the, the, the choir pew or... Maybe down, if I've got somebody singing or another preacher preaching, I might, I'll, I'll, I can sit anywhere. It don't matter to me, amen. Let's not show respect to persons. Let's not be partial. God help us to be what God would have to be. You know, you hear a lot nowadays about being politically correct. Here's what we all want to be, biblically correct. I want to be biblically correct, amen. I hope this has been a help to you tonight. It's been a blessing having these Wednesday night services with you. And of course, here in a little while, We'll be having our 7 o'clock service, and I uh, hope you'll pray for us, and we're praying for you. And uh, whenever you're viewing this, thank you for viewing. And uh, if, if it's a blessing to your heart, hit the like. Amen. Hit the like. And, and you know what? If you do, thank the Lord. It ain't me. Thank the Lord. Amen. God's good. Let's close with a word of prayer for our Wednesday night service. Father, thank you so much for being so good to us. Thank you for these that have viewed. I pray you bless them in a great way, and we'll thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I say we love you. We're praying for you. And uh, God bless you till next week's my prayer.